Entropy is about a lot more than just disorder. One of the important insights first recognized by Boltzmann is this idea that more likely states of a thermodynamic system are going to predominate over time. They're just more likely to exist, and so they're going to be seen more often as we observe a system evolving over time. And in fact, we can see this if we look, for example, at a simulation of an ideal gas. When we first add the gas into the container, we can arrange it sort of however we, we like. And the way this simulation is set up, gas gets pumped in from the right-hand side. So early in the simulation, the gas molecules are going to be really tightly clustered together, as you can see here. But as the simulation evolves over time, what's going to happen? Well, as you can probably guess, the gas molecules are going to sm spontaneously spread out. And if we let the system just sit, let the simulation just run, it's extremely unlikely that the gas particles will cluster back near where they entered the chamber. They're much more likely to remain spread out throughout the container. Evidently, then, something about the spread out state makes it much more likely to exist than the concentrated state that we started with. This was Boltzmann's insight, and it's really the key to the connection between entropy and probability. Let's think just purely in probability terms first. What makes the spread out state likely is that there are many different ways to prepare it, many more than there are to prepare the concentrated state with gas particles only in one portion of the container. To see how this works, we can make an analogy to a set of coins. I have here six nickels, and let's think about two possible states for this collection of six nickels. Let's imagine we're defining our state by the number of heads that we see, irrespective of where the heads show up. So one head is a state, two heads, three heads, four heads, five heads, six heads are all different possible states of this system. Let's look specifically at the one head state versus the three head state. Intuitively, think of the one head state as the concentrated gas state that we just looked at. There's only one head in the six nickels, and so we have a relatively concentrated number of heads. You can think of it that way. Think of the three-head state as the more spread out gas state. We'll bring a little more clarity to this in just a few minutes. The punchline is that the three-head state, where three of the coins are heads and the other three are tails, is more likely to occur than the one-head state in which one coin is heads and the other five are tails. And we can demonstrate this by enumerating the possibilities and thinking about probability and combinatorics. For the one-head state, this is fairly easy. We have the six nickels, all tails, and to generate the one-head states, we can simply flip over each coin. So we can flip over the first coin, that's one possibility, one possible arrangement. We can flip over the second, that's another possible arrangement. The third, yet another, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. And from this, we can see that there are six arrangements that correspond to the one-head state. Mathematically, this is equivalent to the combination six things taken one at a time, which corresponds to six. For the three-head state, this is a little more complicated, but we can do what we just did for the one-head state and enumerate all the possibilities. So let's start with the most straightforward, arguably, which is just three heads in the first three positions and three tails in the others. And I can begin moving that third head over one. So I can move it over one, move it over again, that's two more states. Now I can look at the middle head and move that over one, move that over yet again, and move that over yet again to generate three more states. And I can continue doing this to generate all the possible ways in which we can have three heads and three tails within these six coins. If you go through this process of enumerating the possibilities or think about the combinatorics, you'll realize that this amounts to the combination of six things taken three at a time, which comes out to 20 total possibilities. So indeed, by comparing the one-head state to the three-head state and looking at the combinatorics, we've shown that there are more ways to generate the three-head state than there are to generate the one-head state, 20 versus 6. If we looked at this for all of the different possible numbers of heads, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, we would realize that the three-head state has the largest number of possible arrangements that generate it. So when we flip the six coins randomly, three heads is going to be the most common result. In the language of thermodynamics and entropy, we can say that the three-head state will dominate over time. These numbers 6 and 20 
the number of ways to prepare the one-head and three-head states have a special name that was coined by Boltzmann, W. You can think of W as the likelihood of a state. It's the number of distinct possible arrangements that produce that state. Boltzmann's great insight was that entropy is related to this W value. Specifically, the entropy S is equal to a constant KB times the natural log of W. The natural log of W is unitless, so this constant KB, which is called Boltzmann's constant, has units of joules per Kelvin, the units of entropy, and it's equal to 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23rd joules per Kelvin. Using this equation and the W values we've already determined for the six coin flipping trials, we can calculate the entropy of the one head and three head states. And if we do this, we get 2.47 times 10 to the negative 23rd joules per Kelvin for the one head state and 4.14 times 10 to the negative 23rd joules per Kelvin for the three head state. So the entropy of the three head state is higher than the entropy of the one head state, and this is a direct consequence of the fact that W for the three head state is larger than it is for the one head state. It's a little bit weird to think about a delta S for going from the one head state to the three head state, but we can see that the delta S in going from one to the other is positive. And so, for example, if we started with a set of data that had a lot of one head trials within it. In other words, we'd flip the six coins and we managed to get a lot of one head trials. What we could say is that over time, as we performed this experiment over and over again, flipping the six coins randomly, eventually the three head tr trials would start to spontaneously overwhelm the one head trials. This makes sense in light of the fact that the delta S in going from the one head to the three head state is greater than zero, and we've seen the idea before that processes that increase the entropy of a system tend to be spontaneous. Not always, but this reinforces that idea in a probabilistic context. Let's look at a chemical example that's analogous to this coin situation to bring a little more clarity to entropy and bring us up to entropy values that are a little more sensible and in tune with the real world. COS is a molecule that's like carbon dioxide in which one of the oxygen atoms has been replaced by sulfur. And in crystalline COS, which is, exists at very low temperatures, the molecules are arranged parallel to one another, kind of like coins sitting next to each other. We can look at the atom that's pointing up, whether it's oxygen or sulfur, and think of those two states of each molecule as either tails, let's say if the oxygen is pointing up, or heads if the sulfur is pointing up. So from here on out, if the oxygen is pointing up, I'm going to call that tails, and if the sulfur is pointing up in the crystal, I'm going to call that heads. Perfect analogy to our coin situation from before. Instead of looking at six molecules, I want to look now at a mole of COS and talk about the difference in entropy between the perfect crystal in which all of the molecules are aligned the same way and the completely random crystal in which we don't know whether oxygen is pointing up or sulfur is pointing up. You probably have an idea intuitively of which situation has a higher entropy, but we're going to use Boltzmann's equation to show, in fact, that the perfect crystal and the random state differ in entropy. The perfect crystal is all tails, let's say, all of the oxygens pointing in the same direction. There's only one way there's only one possible arrangement that generates that state, just all the oxygens pointing up, right? That means W equals 1 for the perfect crystal. And since S is equal to Boltzmann's constant times the natural log of W, and the natural log of 1 is equal to 0, the entropy of that state is 0. We're going to see this idea again, in fact, in the third law of thermodynamics. The completely random state has a distribution of heads and tails, if you like, that we don't know. The best guess we can give is that the number of possible arrangements that would generate the completely random state is 2 to the power of Avogadro's number now. 2 because we have two possible states, heads or tails, and Avogadro's number as an exponent because there are Avogadro's number of molecules in this mole of COS that we're looking at. So that's an astronomically huge value for W, 2 to the Avogadro's number. It's not even worth calculating W on its own. It's just worth appreciating that this number is astronomical. Thankfully for us, the natural log allows us to take Avogadro's number out of the argument of the logarithm 
and kick it out front as a multiplying factor. When we do this to calculate the entropy, we get that S is equal to Boltzmann's constant times Avogadro's number times the natural log of 2, and this turns out to be 5.76 joules per Kelvin. Now, before ending this video, something I want you to do is multiply Boltzmann's constant in joules per Kelvin by Avogadro's number, which is a number of things per mole. You think about the units there, you may discover something interesting about what that product comes out to, but I'll leave it up to you to do the actual calculation. It'll suffice to say that you'll end up with a number that should seem very familiar. In any event, it's clear that the completely random state with the oxygen and sulfur positions distributed randomly, heads and tails just completely random, has a significantly higher entropy by 5.76 joules per Kelvin than the perfect crystal in which all of the molecules are arranged the same way. This means that over time, if we allow the COS molecules to flip, we're going to spontaneously evolve from the perfect crystal to one in which the molecules are arranged randomly. And I want to emphasize that this is not due to any sort of energetic reason. The heads and tail states have the same energy, so there's no lowering in energy, for example, that's driving this. This is a purely statistical effect. That's why we can separate entropy and all of its weirdness, all of its phenomena, from energy and enthalpy, which is a totally separate issue.